Good evening, I'm uh, Rusty the Robot. Uh, I have recently received a new Logitech G502 Proteus Core, as seen here. It's a tunable gaming mouse. Um, I'm here to give you my unboxing and first impressions of the mouse. Just a basic impressions, the full review is to follow. So, the box is, well, it's a standard box. It uh, boasts the specs of the mouse around all sides of the box. Um, random statistics about it and showing things like uh, features such as the adjustable weights in various languages. Back to the front we can see that there is a door which, which opens like this um, and reveals the mouse in its little plastic bubble casing and a black um, a black faced win uh, door that uh, details the apparently revolutionary sensor as they are calling it that they use the Delta Zero sensor technology now as I'm sure you all know things like gaming peripherals are full of silly terms like Delta Zero technology that mean next to nothing to almost anyone else as do the words Proteus Core um, the door itself is actually quite satisfying it closes with a nice little magnetic clasp there so it's time to go inside the box. Now this is probably completely overkill for this, but I don't mind. Got it set to quite a, a shallow blade. I don't want to go um, damaging anything inside there. So here we go. It uh, opens from the back. slides out just a fairly simple blue plastic tray. Um, what many people seem to mistake for a battery, which is the magnetic clasp for the door of the box, is enclosed there. Underneath the plastic tray there is the basic Logitech registration and safety instructions or important information, safety compliance and warranty is what this small brochure here seems to be. The mouse itself seems to have a nice moderately thick braided cable. Nice to the touch, actually fairly soft feeling fabric. Uh, looks like I should... Right, I will have to bring that entirely through after unraveling it. It has a nice little velcro strap actually to keep the mouse from you can tether that to whichever you wish, uh, I suppose, whilst in use. And you can... It gives you an added option for keeping the cable exactly where you want it. It's be quite a long cable. It has, at the end, it has a, just a standard cable label. It does tell you what it is, and it actually has the name of the device on the label, which is quite nice which does allow you to, when you're unplugging uh, devices from your PC, at least be exactly sure what you're plug unplugging rather than just the make of it. So we have the mouse itself, uh, it has a Logitech G logo right dead centre. The, the back is a, is a very smooth plastic feel to it. Um, the sides here, the sides, are rubberized. Uh, again, plasticky feel on the feet. On this side we can see some of the buttons. There's these are all programmable buttons. Um, this would be initially the sniper button. It doesn't take a huge amount of pressure to click, but it does give positive feedback of when it's pressed, as do the uh, forward and back buttons there. Uh, it appears to have it's a slightly rubberized feel to this uh, LED section that seems to be used to, to display which profile you're on or uh, perhaps DPI stages. Um, the right hand side is also slightly, that's quite a nice uh, feeling rubberized grip, it's uh, somewhat textured, should hold the pinky quite nicely, and as a first impression that feels very comfortable in my hand. Um, my hands are neither particularly large nor small, so it should be fairly comfortable for quite a, a wide range of people. The left and right clicks, um, you can rest your fingers on them without clicking them. They have a plastic finish. The left click especially being slightly concave, your finger rests in that quite nicely. 
uh, if your fingers were thicker you may find that you would click these two buttons here by accident. I don't think that will be an issue for myself. There's also um, two buttons just below the scroll wheel. The first of which uh, I believe can be used to change modes. Again, can be programmable for various games. The second of which is somewhat more interesting. Now at present the mouse wheel will scroll freely. I can just spin it like that and it just keeps on going. It wasn't even a hard flick and it just keeps going for seconds. You click that and it actually gets some detents and does the sort of one step at a time scrolling that you may be more used to. So that gives some valuable options. It's a just the right amount of resistance. Um, as it's not rubberized, I think some people may feel that their hand may slip off that. I, I think that might be that that might be an experience that varies depending on who you are. It is it does have indents at least to give your finger something to grip on. The scroll wheel itself, it takes a reasonable amount of pressure to click. It's not hard and it's not going to be clicked accidentally. Now onto some of the tunable features of the mouse. It's apparently a heavy gaming mouse. Uh, to me it feels quite light. The feet seem to be based along the, the base here, the top, two feet here, and along the, the what would be the left hand side, currently the right as it's upside down. The base itself can be opened and is done so by moving this little magnetic flap here. This, this blue section just lifts and opens like a door and then detaches completely. That exposes more greatly the sensor and also the casing for the adjustable magnets. Now these allow you to tune both the weight and the centre of gravity of the device and they come in a little handy container which actually holds them really quite nicely and quite firmly as well. These can be taken out and placed in various locations. They state that they are 3.6 grams. And they fit very firmly in the mouse indeed. Um, they can be placed in various locations and sit snugly in their compartments. Once placed, they don't appear to move at all, which does allow you to tune both the weight and the centre of gravity of the mouse to your own personal preference. And on to seeing how this performs. So now having downloaded the uh, Logitech software and installed the mouse, I'm able to see how it runs. Now initially it feels very smooth in the hand. It uh, seems to switch off almost instantly when picking it up unlike my, my previous mouse. Now this is just on a bog standard really cheap mouse pad that was uh, actually made from recycled material, not, not any special gaming mouse pad but it's better than dragging it across the wood of my desk. Now in the software here, I'll just bring this now into the center, we can see that uh, every single one of these buttons is highlighted and is clickable um, which allows you to then choose exactly what that does in a profile. Back to the overview here. Okay, that still <laughs> shows the shows the profile settings. Um, each switch is therefore labelled and everything like that and you can choose anything you wish there. Now, the one thing I did neglect to mention is the scroll wheel. As you may notice here, you can actually lean the scroll wheel left and right which can be used to scroll left and scroll right in spreadsheets or anything you like just to add some additional functionality to that. Uh, the mouse itself it certainly moves very smoothly. It comes with options um, to customize the sensor to your actual uh, surface which apparently can create a, a lift off distance of less than one millimeter which is great if you like to lift the mouse off to move it without having it jump around as it is when I'm picking it up and putting it down there a little. Now that is a, a lot less of a jump than my previous mouse was able to give. 
at the home screen here we're also able to see that you can either store your profiles on the mouse itself or with a, a um, click of a switch there you can store them on the computer and it can automatically detect which game you're playing uh, that would then allow you to have various profiles set up for each game that would start as soon as you start playing that game similar to the G15 keyboard which has profiles as you may see here for Dragon Age Evolve and uh, somewhere down here The Witcher and Borderlands 2 among other games and it can detect automatically when you're playing them. The other settings available as you see are the DPI settings here now I do hear that these change on the fly when you change them, so if I were to change, I believe I'm on the second lowest at present, let's just see, yep. As you change them it highlights, sort of glowing, the one that you're using. I'm currently at 6400 DPI, or CPI as you may prefer to call it, uh, it's a more accurate term but that's fine. Drop that back to the default because that's currently easier for me. Um, but if I were to change that I can drag that drag them together there by mistake. Um, I can click anywhere I can sorry drag that right down to 200. It is a little jarring that you don't have to click apply or anything to change them. I'm now <laughs> dragging the mouse around at 200 uh, CPI there. I'll just restore that to its default for now. Um, the next option here is it then allows you to choose the lighting settings. That's of the the Logitech G symbol that's on the back of the mouse as I demonstrated earlier. Um, you can choose the brightness so if you don't like a little blue light on your mouse you can slide that all the way down and it actually turns completely off. Um, you can also add a, a breathing effect which just allows the mouse to the mouse like to fade in and out. Uh, the plus and minus defines the speed. It's almost uh, it's pretty quickly done. You can also choose the, the DPI lights along the left hand side between your thumb and forefinger. Um, don't remain on by default. You can choose that they remain on so you can always see or you can choose that they turn off so as not to distract you. Also has some sleep timer available there that's currently deactivated. Um, here you see there's a surface tuning. Factory default. Uh, cloth gaming mouse pad, specifically the Logitech ones. This should allow you to choose a new surface and I'll just call this a recycled mouse pad. And I'll say tune. So place the mouse on the surface you intend to use, then press and hold the button and move the mouse continuously in a figure eight pattern covering the area you normally use. And I should keep it in the center of a speedometer. So this allows you to then... Wow, it really wants you to go very quickly. I'm actually shaking my table about by doing this. I really don't move my mouse great uh, great distances for the most part. I tend to use uh, mostly a palm grip with a slight claw nature to it. Um, so I don't tend to move it quite as quickly as that now. I am finding the mouse jumps a little less as I take it off. I, I'm not noticing any difference immediately in tracking. I may need to retune this at a later date, but that that's always an option. Seems you can add as many surfaces and then delete your own surfaces. You can't delete these uh, pre-made surface profiles. There's also a, um, an ability to assign macros to any keys, which I'm not going to do right now. Key press and key duration, duration heat map, it shows allows you to record what you're doing. Um, so I guess each mouse button's gonna. Yeah, so it shows how much I, I pressed each key there. I'm not entirely sure what the utility of that is, but some people might like those stats. And the rest is just the general settings of the software. So overall it does feel like a very nice mouse. I'm sure I'm going to enjoy this for gaming. Uh, the full review is to come once I've had a few weeks to actually get to grips with it, try different weight settings and see how well I enjoy it in my favourite games. So in the meantime I'm Rusty the Robot. Please feel free to follow my YouTube channel. Just subscribe to that. You can also follow me on Twitch and on Twitter. The links are here in my YouTube channel. Have a great night.